So recall that when we're solving equations with a variable on one side, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw our line through our equal sign. What this does is it just helps us distinguish which side of the equation is what. And then for step two, we are going to label our sides. So our variable in this case that we're solving for is x, so we're going to put that on one side. And then we're going to label the other side as ee, which stands for everything else. So that means everything that doesn't have an x with it needs to end up being on the right side of this line. So for step three, we're going to move our terms that don't have x with it. So the thing that's out of place is this plus 7 right here because this plus 7 does not have an x with it so that means this plus 7 really needs to be on the other side because it's gonna be with the everything else's so to get rid of something that's plus we're going to minus 7 from both sides recall that the reason we minus 7 is because we need to get rid of this plus 7 to get rid of it we have to do the opposite of plus which is to minus and the rule in math says whatever you do to one side so we're minusing 7 on the left we also have to do the exact same thing on the right so that's why you have a minus 7 on both sides of our line this line remember helps us keep things balanced so whatever happens on the left side of that line also has to happen on the right side of that line so now we're going to start doing our math. A plus 7 minus 7, that's going to cancel. I'm left with 4x equals 23 minus 7 is 16. Our fourth and final step is to get x by itself. Remember that when we have a number and a letter attached to each other, a coefficient and a variable, they are being multiplied. There's a multiplication symbol there in the middle that we don't necessarily see, but it is there. To undo multiplication, the opposite of that is to divide. So we're going to divide by 4. And again, whatever we do over here on this left side, we also have to do on the right side. So that means on the right, we're also going to divide by 4. So 4 divided by 4, those are going to cancel. 4 over 4 is 1. I get x equals 16 divided by 4 is 4. So that's my answer. Always remember, finally, to check your answer. Plug it back in. See if it actually works. So check your answer. So we're going to go back up here. In my original problem, I'm going to write this in purple because I haven't done purple yet was 4x plus 7 equals 23. So instead of x, we're saying that x equals 4. Remember, if they're equal, that means they have the same value, and I can trade them out easily. So we're going to put a 4 in there for x. So 4 times 4 plus 7 equals 23. And what we need to do is we need to figure out what this side equals. Well, 4 times 4 is 16. Notice every time I'm just bringing down my 23. 16 plus 7 is 23. And again, I'm bringing down this 23 on the right. Because these two are equal, we know that it really was our answer. We did the work correctly. For our next problem, we have x over 3 minus 5 equals negative 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my line through the middle. And... I'm going to label my sides, so I'm solving again for x, so my x's are going to go on the left and everything else is going to go on the right hand side here. So I've now got to figure out what I need to move, so what's going to be out of, what's, or what's in the wrong place. Well this minus 5 right here doesn't have an x with it, so that means it's what needs to go. So to get rid of something that's minus, I'm going to do the opposite of minusing and I'm going to add 5 to both sides because whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So this x divided by 3 is going to come down. When I have minus 5 plus 5 right here, a minus 5 and a plus 5 are going to cancel each other out. So that's gone. And then negative 4 plus 5 is going to give us 1. Think of it like money. You owe $4 and you have $5. So now I've got to do a step, which is to get x by itself. So currently, x and 3 are divided, so I need to do the opposite of division, which is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. Another way you could think of it, so I'm going to rewrite this as x over 3 equals 1.
okay? I realize you hate fractions, but again, if you make one side a fraction, if you make if one side is a fraction, it's easiest actually to make the other side a fraction because then all you have to do is cross multiply. Either way, what's going to end up happening is my I'm going to end up with x equals 1 times 3, which is 3. Looking at this step right here, when I cross multiply, x times 1 is x, 3 times 1 is 3. So no matter what, notice I got x equals 3. Don't forget to check your work. Check your work. Plug it back in. Make sure it works. I'm not going so if I do that up here, I'm going to do it in black. Instead of x over 3, I'm going to put 3 divided by 3 minus 5 equals negative 4. Well, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 1 minus 5, we've got to see if that equals negative 4. 1 minus 5 means I have a dollar, but I owe somebody 5. So I'm going to pay them what I can. I'm still going to owe 4. So lo and behold, both sides are negative 4. That means that negative or that positive 3 was our correct answer. Alright, so we have one last problem. First thing we're going to do again is we're going to draw our line down the middle. And then we're going to label our sides. I'm going to label them as my x's because that's what I'm solving for. And then I'm going to label the other side as EE, -E, which again stands for everything else. Alright, so to get x alone, the thing that's over here, so on the left side of this line, because this is where x is, the part that doesn't have x is this 7. Now, it is very important to note that this 7 here is a positive 7. This minus sign goes with that 2. So that 7 is positive, and to get rid of a positive 7... I need to do the opposite of plus 7, which is to minus 7. And whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. So plus 7 minus 7, those are going to cancel. I have negative 2x equals 16 minus 7 is 9. So my final step to get rid of this negative 2, remember if a, num a number and a letter are next to each other, they're being multiplied. The opposite of multiplication is to divide. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. A negative 2 divided by negative 2, these are going to cancel. I get x equals, well, 9 divided by negative 2 is going to be a decimal. So we're going to leave it in fraction form because fractions are actually better. But let's think about our sign. If the 9 is positive and the 2 is negative, well, we know a positive divided by a negative is a negative. So our fraction is negative 9 over 2. And you could write that one of several ways. You could put the negative with the 9, or you could put the negative here in front, as long as there's a negative sign somewhere. So for our last problem, we have 4 times x plus 3 minus 2x equals 8. So we're going to start off the same way, draw our line down the middle. And we're going to label our sides. We want our x's on one side and everything else on the other side. Now this one's got a little bit more work to do because right now we have multiple x's here and we have these parentheses that we need to get rid of. So we're going to distribute the 4 in. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 3 is 12. So I have 4x plus 3, sorry, 4x plus 12 minus 2x equals 8. I can combine my 4x and my minus 2x together because they both have x's with them. And when I do that, I'm going to end up with 2x plus 12 equals 8. And now I can solve. So my first step to solving is going to be to subtract 12 from both sides. When I do that, the 12's are going to cancel on the left. So I have 2x equals 8 minus 12 is negative 4. My final step is I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and I'm going to get x equals negative 2. Don't forget you need to go back and plug that in to make sure it works.